Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us online for our worship service. Uh, as you can tell, this is not a typical worship service in that today, the day of Pentecost, the congregation is worshiping outside and we don't have the equipment yet to stream services outside and so we wanted to provide you with a worship experience uh, that is a throwback for us uh, to our uh, COVID days when we were just taping the worship services, but we wanted to provide you with, with um, the Word of God on this very special day and prayers and uh, some uh, time for reflection as well. And so uh, the service itself will be just that, will be prayers, readings, a sermon, and more prayers. And so let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, our creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native tongue? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And from the prophet Joel we hear, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. 
Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified in him. The word of the Lord. And now the gospel, which, which is according to the evangelist John, chapter 14. Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be with you and in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. We read the, these texts every, every Pentecost from the book of Acts, which is Luke's second volume. Of course, his first volume is named after him, Luke. And he has written the second volume, the book, the Acts of the Apostles. And I had a seminary professor who said it was misnamed. It should have been named the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And in this volume, we will see how Christ's message forms into communities of faith and expands not only in Jerusalem and in Palestine, but it expands into the Gentile world. And in the book of Acts, the first seven chapters are devoted to Peter and his work in ministry. And then you'll see the shift over as Saul, who becomes Paul, takes over for the rest of the book. And that's significant because, as I have said before, This was all new to the apostles. I mean, we know how the story goes because we've heard it over and over and over again. But for them, these amazing events that transpired in their lifetime within a short span of time left them bewildered, as it says in the scriptures. And I love that term, to be wildered, to be thrown in to the wilderness again and to feel as if 
in the wilderness, you have no sense of direction. Nothing is familiar. And everything might seem a bit frightening because you don't have what was familiar to guide you. So they were bewildered and amazed and perplexed. What does this mean for us? And then they speak in languages that they did not learn. They didn't go to an English as a second language course to learn English. And if you have ever had to learn another language, you, really, you realize how difficult it can be, especially as you get older. But instantly, they were speaking in languages that others from those regions of the Near East could understand. And again, what does this all mean? What are these tongues of fire doing here? I mean, just weeks ago, we were celebrating the resurrection, a man rising from the dead. And now he's ascended, and we have this advocate, as Jesus promised, this spirit which is holy. Now we know in faith that there are many spirits, and Paul talks about the many spirits in the world. And how do you discern between all of these spirits and the Holy Spirit? How do I know that the Holy Spirit is within me and acting within me, as opposed to another spirit? For Paul and the apostles, it was, does this spirit proclaim Jesus Christ? Does it proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's the mark of the Holy Spirit. Does it confess Christ? And for the apostles, now that they have been forming communities of faith around Jesus, or the, the stories of Jesus, and as people began to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, when they went into the Gentile communities, how does the Holy Spirit affect the transformation of Gentiles? Does the Holy Spirit even go into those places? Well, it's clear in these documents that the Jews believed on the, day, on the last days, all of the people, all peoples, will know that it is God. So... How do you become a Christian? And in back then and this time, they weren't even called Christians. They were people of the way. How were they converted? And the apostles who were with Jesus believed that you needed to be a good Jew first and observe all the Jewish laws, all of the laws. And when Paul comes onto the scene, doing mission in the Gentile world, world, he says that, no, you need faith that has been given by the Holy Spirit into the hearts of people, and it's the Holy Spirit that converts, not the laws of Judaism. So, you hear this language of adoption. We are adopted into this faith. We Gentiles have been adopted into this faith that began with the ministries, the death and resurrection of Christ, and moved forward by the Holy Spirit. And these men must have been on fire. They must have been truly inspired to go into a hostile world to proclaim quite an incredible story. And it's even more incredible that people actually believed that 
these events occurred. It would be hard in today's world, in a secular society, to take that same message and say, yes, all of a sudden there was rumbling in the, in the, the heavens, and we all started speaking in different tongues, and then a great fire came and inspired us. People would say, really? Um, you might want to see a mental health coordinator or specialist if you believe that. So it's incredible that from this moment forward that people began to believe. The Holy Spirit filled them with the truth and they believed the truth and that they formed these communities that continued and continue today. And here we are, 2,000 years later, proclaiming that Christ is, is the Son of God, that Christ has come to save the world, that the kingdom of God will come, and the peace that Christ promises will prevail. That death, that violence, that hatred will dissipate, fall away, and the glory of God will, um, will be forever. So on this day of Pentecost, it's a day which reminds us of our roots, of our heritage, of our traditions, but it is also a day in which we gather to move forward to again proclaim God, proclaim God crucified, proclaim God risen, proclaim God who is in control, and I hate that word control, but who is in all of God's creation and that God will fulfill his promises and so that we do not have to be afraid but we rest in our faith that the Holy Spirit that continues to inspire us and to move us will continue forever, as it says in our scriptures. The Holy Spirit will be with us forever. How the church will look in the next few years, the next, next decades, I don't know. But what I do know is that the Holy Spirit has formed and has reformed and has re-reformed the people of God to what God has for us in our mission into this world. And it is God's power and it is God's Spirit that does the converting, that changes the hearts of people. And so we thank God for this, this day of celebration in which the Holy Spirit has been offered, has been received, and has been sent out in and through us. Amen. Let us pray. Holy living one, Holy Moving One, burst open our locked doors, and by your Spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the Advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your Holy Spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for the people of Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York, and for all of those who have suffered unconscionable deaths in these past weeks. We ask that your Holy Spirit be among them to comfort them, to strengthen them, and to renew their hope as they go through these darkest of times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ and by your Spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the author and giver of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. Well, this ends our uh, Pentecostal day of celebration here uh, in uh, St. John's, and uh, we hope that you found it to be inspirational and perhaps a little educational, as I know that many of you um, are probably traveling or have not come back yet to church, and so this is our way of, of staying connected with you in worship. So I just want to lift up a couple of announcements before I go. Um, we're, we will have a music camp, and it is from June 13th through the 16th, so there is a sign up for that. Uh, we have family fun nights starting this summer again. Three nights this summer. Uh, the first one is on June 16th, that Thursday night, June 16th. Also on Thursdays this summer, we're doing something a little bit different. We have a summer sampler study, and that's with Ralph Berglund. He'll be leading this discussion in the library and that's on June 16th. So we're hoping that the night of June 16th will be a really a fun church night. And he's leading it from June 16th to August of 11 for a sampling of Bible stories. A really a nice refresher course. Geared for Bible beginners and Bible veterans. No prep is needed. Simply come to the sessions that work for your schedule. And that is at what time... Pam, do you know? 6.30, I believe. So uh, come a little earlier, just in case. That way you can have some fellowship as well. Uh, I will be gone uh, starting, uh, when you see this, starting tomorrow, Monday, June 6th. And I've, I'm going to be gone for three weeks. One of the weeks uh, that I will be gone, my family is going to... Georgia, northern Georgia, and the Smoky Mountains to meet some of Cindy's family as we will stay in a nice big house and just enjoy each other's company and to relax. And so I will be uh, back on the 27th. So from June 6th to the 25th, Pastor Frank will be doing uh, the liturgies, and we have a recent seminary graduate uh, who will be preaching two of those Sundays, so um, you can look forward to that. Otherwise, all the information that's going on is in our newsletter and in the happenings and on our website, so you can stay informed. So um, God bless you, and I hope you have a, a great, a great Sunday. Amen. <laughs>